Please rise. Blessed be the name of our God, always, now, and ever, and to the ages of ages. The blameless are in the way. Alleluia. You are blessed, O Lord. Teach me your commandments. Alleluia. My soul is overcome with longing for your rulings at all times. Alleluia. My soul is drowsy from indifference. Strengthen me with your words. Alleluia. Turn my heart to your testimonies and not to personal gain. Alleluia. Indignation has seized me because of the wicked who abandon your law. Alleluia. I am with all who fear you and observe your commandments. Alleluia. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia. Have mercy on us, O God. According to your goodness, we pray to you. Hear us and have mercy. We also pray for the repose of the soul of our departed brother in Christ, Thomas, and for the forgiveness of all his transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, that the Lord God may rest his soul with a just repose for the mercies of God and for the forgiveness of his sins. Let us ask Christ, our eternal King and God, let us pray to the Lord. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your departed servant, Thomas, O Christ our God. And to you we ascribe glory with your eternal Father and your holy good and life-giving spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Your hands have made me and fashioned me. Give me sense and I will learn your commandments. Be merciful to me, O God. Through, though I am shriveled like a wineskin in the smoke, I have not forsaken your commandments. Be merciful to me, O Lord. I am yours, save me, for I have sought your desires. Be merciful to me, O Lord. I have not turned away from your rulings, for you taught me these. Be merciful to me, O Lord. It is time for the Lord to act, for they have broken your law. Be merciful to me, O Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Be merciful to me, O Lord, and have mercy on me, alleluia. Turn to me and have mercy on me, as is your way with those who love your name, alleluia. I am small and despised, but I do not forget your commandments, alleluia. Listen to my voice, in your love, O Lord, and in your justice give me life. Alleluia. Men of power have persecuted me without reason, but only of your words does my heart stand in awe. Alleluia. Let my soul live and I shall praise you, and your commandments will help me. Seek your servant, for I did not forget your commandments. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. The company of the saints has found the fountain of life and the gate to paradise. May I also find the way through repentance. I am the lost sheep, call me back, O Savior, and save me. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. You have made me out of old, out of nothing, and you honored me with your divine image. And when I disobeyed your commandments, you received me back to earth. Whence I was taken, restore me 
to the likeness and renew me to the former beauty. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your commandments. I am the image of your inevitable glory, though I bear the marks of transgression. Pity your creation, O Lord, and cleanse me according to your compassion and restore me to the place I long for by making me a citizen of paradise. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your commandments. Give rest to your servant, O Lord, and place him in heaven where the company of the saints, O Lord, and the righteous will shine like stars. Give rest to your departed servant by overlooking all his offenses. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Let us praise with devotion the Trinity of the one Godhead by saying, Holy are you the Father, who is from everlasting, the co-eternal Son, and the Holy Spirit. Enlighten us who worship you in faith, and rescue us from eternal fire, now and forever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Hail, O humble maiden, who gave birth to God in the flesh, and the race of man found salvation through you. <clears throat> May we find heaven, O birth giver of God, pure and blessed. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to you, our God. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, glory to you, our God. Alleluia, 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 glory to you, our God. Give rest with the saints of Christ to the soul of your servant where there is no pain, no sorrow, no suffering, but life everlasting. Meta anapavson Christem tim psychitu What pleasure is there in life that has no sorrow? Which glory can last on this earth without change? All is more fleeting than a shadow, more elusive than dreams. A sudden change of all of these are followed by death. Yet in the light of your continence and in the sweetness of your beauty, give rest to the one you have chosen, O Christ, lover of mankind. Man withers like a flower and passes like a dream, and every man comes to an end. And when the trumpet will sound again, the dead will rise like in a quake, to greet you, O Christ our God, at that time grant, O Lord, that the one you have taken from us, the soul of your servant, be in the fellowship of the saints. All is vanity in human affairs, all that cannot be enjoyed after death. No, death, no wealth is kept, no glory can follow. For once death has come, all of these are lost. Let us say, therefore, to Christ, the immortal King, give rest to the one you departed, where the blessed live. Indeed, the mystery of death is awesome, how the soul is suddenly separated from the body, and how the natural bond of being together is cut off 
by the divine will, so we pray to you, O life giver and lover of men. Give rest to the one departed, this life in the company of the just. Where is the desire of the world? Where is the pomp of the temporal? Where are the gold and the silver? Where is the gathering and noise of friends? All is dust, all is ashes, all is shadow. But let us come to pray to the immortal King. O Lord, deem the one departed from us worthy of your eternal blessings and give him rest in the everlasting happiness of heaven. I recall the prophet when he said, I am dust and ashes. And when I looked into the graves and saw the bare bones and said, Who is this king or soldier, rich or poor, righteous or sinner? Yet, O Lord, in your loving kindness, give rest to your servant with the righteous. My beginning and my essence came pure creative command, for it was your will to make me out of visible and invisible nature. A living being you formed my body from earth and gave me a soul by your divine and quickening breath. Give rest therefore, Lord, to your servant in the land of the living, in the company of the righteous. Our Savior, who gives us life, give rest to our departed brother, whom you have taken from us in this transient world, and who, care, and who cries out to you, glory to you. I weep and I wail when I perceive death and see laid in the grave, the beauty fashioned for us in the likeness of God, to be without form, without beauty, without glory. What is this amazing thing? What is this mystery that happened around us? How were we delivered to corruption? And how do we become united to death? Surely by the will of God who gives to the departed rest. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Your death became the cause of immortality, O Lord. For if you had not been placed in the tomb, paradise would not have been opened. Give rest therefore to the one departed according to your loving kindness now and forever and to the ages of ages amen pure virgin gate of the word mother of our god plead for the mercy of his soul blessed be the way where you are going today for a place of rest is prepared for you. Makaria iodos i porevi simeron o ti ti masti si toposan apavseos. Blessed be the way where you are going today for a place of rest has been prepared for you ooh, 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 ooh. to you O lord my god shall i cry the reading is from saint paul's first epistle to the thessalonians let us all be attentive brethren we would not have you ignorant concerning those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, shall not perceive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, shall be caught up 
together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Wisdom, let us all rise. Let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with you all and with your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Let us all be attentive. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. The Lord said to the Jews who came to him, truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son also to have life in himself and has given him authority to execute judgment because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for the hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come forth, those who have done good to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. I can do nothing on my own authority as I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just, because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Glory to you, O Lord, glory to you. Have mercy upon us, O God. According to your great mercy, we pray to you, hear us and have mercy. We also pray for the repose of the soul of our departed brother in Christ, Thomas, and for the forgiveness of all his transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, that the Lord God may rest his soul with a just repose for the mercies of God and for the forgiveness of his sins. Let us ask Christ, our eternal King and God, let us pray to the Lord. O God of spirits and of all flesh, whoever came death and vanquished the devil and gave life to your world, the same Lord give rest to the soul of your departed servant Thomas in a place of light, in a place of happiness, in a place of peace, where there is no pain, sorrow, and suffering. Grace and merciful God, forgive every sin committed by him, whether by word or deed or thought, for there is no man who lives and does not sin. You alone are without sin, your righteousness is everlasting righteousness, and your word is the truth. Let us pray to the Lord. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your departed servant, Thomas, O Christ our God, and to you we ascribe glory with your Father, who is from everlasting in your holy good and life, giving spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Glory to you, our God, our hope, glory to you. Lord of the living and the dead, the immortal King and risen Christ, our true God, through the praise of his pure and holy Mother, of the glorious forefathers Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of Lazarus, the friend of Christ, and all the saints. Commit the soul of our departed brother in Christ Thomas with the righteous. Give him rest in Abraham's bosom, and count him with the just. And for us, have mercy as a good and kind and merciful God. Everlasting be the memory of our departed brother, who is worthy of blessedness and eternal memory. Everlasting be the memory of departed brother, who is worthy of blessedness and eternal memory. Everlasting be his memory. Everlasting be his memory. Everlasting be his memory. Eonia imni me. Eonia imni me. Eonia to imni me. Everlasting be his memory. Everlasting be his memory. Everlasting be his memory. Please be seated.
We want you not to remain in ignorance, brothers, about those who sleep in death. You should not grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so it will be for those who die as Christians. God will bring them to life with Jesus in 1 Thessalonians. In today's epistle, St. Paul clearly indicates to us Christians the way we should look upon death. This is the only way, the true way, the way which has been given to us by our Lord Jesus Christ. History tells us that in the ancient times, death was a mystery and a great riddle. People could not explain the nature and cause of death. To them, death was an incomprehensible and a tremendous problem. It is why they had a separate God, the dominator of the world of the dead. The philosophers had tried hard to explain the mystery of death, but all was in vain. This is why they had no hope and were uncertain of the nature of death. This stage of uncertainty, darkness, and despair was clarified by our Lord Jesus, who by his death, he conquered death. In other words, he conquered evil, and he assured us of a future and eternal life. Christ died and rose again into life, so also the members of the church dying likewise in Christ acquired the right of resurrection and to live eternally and reign with Christ whose kingdom is everlasting and undestructible. This is the hope which St. Paul speaks today. And in this hope, we pass through this temporal life on earth, struggling in the strife that is set before us and looking unto Jesus, the author of life and the fountainhead of faith, thus becoming partakers of his sufferings, that we may become also sharers of his resurrection and of his eternal glory and blessedness. We Orthodox Christians believe that death is nothing but a separation of the immortal soul with a corporal body. As such, it has been stated clearly in the Holy Bible and also in the teachings of the church that our soul will one day be reunited with our bodies in an illuminated and mysterious form. St. John Chrysostom, one of the great fathers of our church, says the following about the separation. Death is like a garment or an article of clothing which has been taken off and hung up with the expectation <clears throat> that it will soon be worn again in the future. This is how the soul is separated from the body and like that garment, it will return to the body at the second coming of our Lord when he will judge the quick and the dead. St. Paul in today's epistle says, we the sincerely faithful should not mourn death like the unfaithful ones as we look forward with a hope and expectation that God will call all of us and reunite us with our bodies. But this union presupposes proper preparation before death. In this respect, we must live a good life, a Christian life, as this life on earth is a temporary state and the goal of all good Christians is the eternal life after death. Accordingly, the thought of death should serve to remind us of this afterlife and the importance of making proper preparation for it before death. That is to harmonize our life justly and righteously and according to our Lord's will and commandment. Today, we are bidding farewell to our dearly beloved brother in Christ, Thomas. One person that I can honestly say through all my years in growing to know him and to understand him had a desire to harmonize his life with God. He wanted to always give the understanding in his heart and mind that God was in the center of everything that he wanted to do. It was really unique 
One day I'm in church many years ago, and I see this then young man in the back of the church, and I said, who is that guy? I only had 15 people in church as my parishioners, so one new person was like a big deal. So I'm looking back, I'm saying, who's this guy? And I didn't get a chance, he left. And the next week he comes back. And he comes back again. And I had a final opportunity to say hi and to talk to him. And the next thing I know, he takes my invitation to come to the back of the altar. And we started a wonderful relationship of him inspiring me with his presence in the altar because I could always look there and I could see him harmonizing his mind harmonizing himself to the call of God. He was constantly in prayer. He was in constant thought. And I turned to him and I said, why are you so worried about things? And he looks at me and he says, Father Cosmas, I'm not worried about anything. I'm blessed with many things. I'm blessed with beautiful families around me, my wife, my, my, my parents at that time were alive. He says, I'm blessed. I'm really blessed. And I said, but why do you look struggling in your prayer? And he goes to me, he says, because this is new to me. I don't know what I'm expected to do here. And I said, well, then I have to give you a chore. And he goes to me and says, what's the chore? And I said, you're going to be in charge of the incense. You're going to light the charcoals. You're going to make sure that I've got incense on all the time. And he says, and he took it with a, like I was the general and he was the sergeant or something. Yes, yes, yes absolutely. Well, that started a relationship of me getting upset with him, yelling at him, you know, getting all frustrated with him because he was smoking it up. I mean, my goodness. I said, Tom, stop already. You're, you're, I don't have enough incense. You're costing me a fortune here. I said, stop already. I didn't know what to say. I had to say in a, in a joking way, right? But it was like, the altar was filled with smoke. It was just like, you know, I was in Mount Athos or something and just smoke everywhere. And I said, Tom, I think I'm going to have to court-martial you. And he says, why? And I said, because I've got too many complaints from people with allergies. And he says, oh, I forgot about those people. But that's okay. This, this incense smells great, Father, and I'll get you more incense. And I said, no. <laughs> Please come. He finally realized after a while that even the incense in the church has a spiritual message, has a spiritual connection, has a spiritual purpose. And you can't chase people out because of the smoke. You have to allow it to become as a fragrance, a slight fragrance where people sense it, they smell it as a heavenly odor. And he finally got it. But it was because of his zeal to understand and to harmonize himself with the altar at that time, with God, with everything around him. We all know Tom. We know what a great heart he had, what a wonderful person he was, what a magnificent husband and brother and relative and friend that he was, but also 
to his beloved parents that have passed away what a great son he was. He cared for everybody. He had everybody in, in his heart. And for many years, I heard all the different wonderful stories of your families. And everyone that connected to Tom, because everyone was a prayer for him. He would come to me and he'd say, Father, I need you to pray for this person. And he would have a list this long. And the list was that long with people that I had no understanding who they were. And he goes to me, do they have to be Greek? And I said, no. And he says, okay, let me give it back to me. And he starts putting some more people. And he was constantly in prayer for people and their health and well-being. I know that these are little things, but these were magnificent things for me as the pastor of this parish and the spiritual father of this wonderful brother who I adored and loved and I missed after he fell ill. And I know that we were constantly in prayer together because he would all of a sudden pick, call me and say, oh, I heard this, or I heard that, or this, or that. Little tidbits here and there that kept us constantly harmonizing ourselves in that beautiful, justly Christian thing of love. I know that Tom prepared himself, his family, made it an important part of him in his preparation before him passing away. We rejoiced together in him being anointed and being communed for the last time. And I know that God was blessing him with his family members around and blessing him with the care and love that he had given to him. I don't know all the details of why God chooses certain people. I've been trying to figure that out for many years now, and I can never come back to giving anybody a real answer. Because I'm still on my journey, as Tom was on his journey, our paths crossed our relationship developed, our thought and hearts opened to understand and to become more inspired about, about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, allowing us to harmonize our lives so that we can righteously, righteously walk and to hopefully encounter our Lord and Savior. This is why it's so important for all of us, as we, sit, as we bid farewell to Tom, to remember one thing, my brothers and sisters here, that Tom is not gone. Tom is with us. Tom will continue to inspire us, continue to enlighten us with his beautiful image of his Christ that was in him. The thing that we all loved about Tom was the Christ in him. Christ was in Tom. He was in Christ. He was a Christ-centered person. And we all enjoyed his beautiful encounter with Christ. Because don't forget, each of us are created differently. There's no two persons the same. And every person has his responsibility as a Christian person to allow the Christ in him to shine forth. And that's what makes the world so beautiful and so enchanting. So Tom allowed us to see the Christ in him. And as we bid farewell, as I said, I say to my dearly beloved brother in Christ, thank you, Tom, on this weekend of Thanksgiving. Thank you for allowing 
you to come into my life, to share with me things that I needed to see, things that I needed to understand. But most of all, I thank you for being that wonderful person that we all love and respect and pray that God will take you and lift you into his heavenly grace. May your memory be eternal, and may our love for him be continued to be inspired by his wonderful and gracious love to us all. In our tradition, <clears throat> we have the opportunity to come at the end of the funeral service one last time to say farewell to our beloved Tom here. <clears throat> From the back of the church, I'm going to ask you to come up and then go out this way through the side, and you can either go out to the courtyard or you can wait inside, but just make sure that we don't continue to you know, raise our voice levels that you're in the back, so better if you go outside. And then uh, we will bring the body out, and, um, <clears throat> and um, Tom will be um, taken to Arlington in the weeks to come, and there we will have his final rest. But I, uh, I ask all of you um, to, again, come up, pay your last respects, go off to the side and go out uh, into the uh, courtyard. One of the things that we chant at the end of the, uh, just for your peace of mind or peace of thought, right? One of the uh, hymns that we chant at the end of the funeral service, which was uh, given to us in the fifth century or so. And the fathers, the early fathers of the Christian church dealt and understood that uh, human beings are human beings, whether we're in the fifth century or in the 21st century. It's, people don't change. People are the same. The same are the same, right? So the problems that we have as human beings is being able to understand things, the why. And that's why the church gives us this beautiful hymn at the end. And um, it is almost like a mom's lullaby, you know, putting somebody to sleep, you know. And St. John, uh, John Damascus uh, gave this hymn to the church so that we could basically give ourselves a, a, um, a relief in our grieving and understand that we are praying for Tom and his soul to be lifted up and his memory be eternal. And that's why the hymn of the church is everlasting be his memory, everlasting be his memory, everlasting be his memory. And it's almost like a hymn of putting someone to sleep. And you all will have that uh, opportunity to, in your hearts, to say everlasting be your memory. So again, I ask the directors from the funeral home to come forth, uh, and we will start from the, to prepare the, the uh, casket, and then you all can start from the back. come from the back, I'd appreciate it. Let us give a last kiss, brothers, to the one departed, and let us give thanks to God 
for he has departed from his kin is being carried to the grave free at last from the vain desires and cares of the flesh where are now the relatives and friends for we are parting from him and we pray that the Lord may give him rest what a parting my brothers what wailing, what weeping for this sudden change. Come on now and embrace the one who was only shortly with us. He is about to be delivered to the grave. He will be covered with stone. He will live in the darkness. He is entering with the dead. All of us, relatives and friends, are now parting from the one we pray the Lord to give rest. Mm, blessed be the way that you are going today for a place of rest is prepared for you. Makaria i odos i porevi simeron o ti ti masti si to posana pavseos Blessed be the way that you are going today for a place of rest is prepared for you. Blessed be the way that you are going today. For a place of rest is prepared for you. Makaria i odos i porevi simeron o ti ti masti si to posana pavseos let us give the last kiss brothers to the one he parted, and let us give thanks to God, for he has departed from his kin, is being carried to the grave, free at last from the vain desires and the cares of the flesh. Where are now the relatives and friends? For we are parting from him, and we pray that the Lord may give him rest. Oh, ye Elei sonimas Holy God Holy Mighty One Holy Mortal Have mercy
αθανάτος ελέη σώνη ημάς. Come bring over here. Bring her over here. Come this way. Όχι εδώ. Έλα από εδώ. Έλα τα επόδια. Έλα τα επόδια. Got the chair right there for you. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Makaria Iodo. Σημερών, ότι τι μα τη το πω σαν Blessed be the way that you are going today for a place of rest is prepared for you. Sprinkle me with his up and I shall be made clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. The earth and everything is, is the earth, is the Lord's. <clears throat> the earth and it and everything, the whole earth and all living are the Lord's. Your earth and to earth you shall return. See you, brother. Love you, my man. the prayers of our Holy Father, Lord Jesus Christ, our God. Have mercy upon us all and save.
have the pallbearers come up. The gentlemen that were helping us before. That's plenty. They all want to be pallbearers. <laughs> good. That's good. That's an honor for Tom. God bless you guys. It's an honor for Tom. All of you come up. Hey, you've been up there. No, it's just, you'll follow the casket out. You guys will just follow the yard. Yeah. <laughs> 